Can humans fight off viruses simply by breathing? Well, let's see what this is. This is in a report at Study Find, so be sure to like and subscribe below for the latest. I presume not breathing makes things a lot worse, so I'm sure there's a point here. Let's take a look. Scientists at Harvard University say fighting viruses is actually as easy as breathing, literally. Their study reveals that the act of breathing generates immune responses that kill invading pathogens. In experiments, a lung chip that mimics the mechanical forces of breathing killed flu bugs. Okay, so what is this chip? According to researchers, the human alveolus chip contains hollow side channels that allow suction to be applied to the chip, seen here. Applying that cyclical strain mimics the motions of normal human breathing. A permeable membrane separates human alveolus cells in the upper channel from human blood vessel cells in the lower channel, allowing them to exchange molecular signals that's seen here. They say the discovery could lead to developing better medications for respiratory disease, including COVID-19. Co-study author Dr. Haking Bai from Harvard Weiss Institute said, quote, This research demonstrates the importance of breathing motions for human lung function, including immune responses to infection, and shows that our human alveolus chip can be used to model these responses in deep portions of the lung where infections are more often severe and lead to hospitalization and death. The alveoli are where the lungs and the blood exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide during the process of breathing in and out. They use the chip to test medications to ensure the drugs actually work. So what's all this about breathing to help fight viruses? Let's continue on. The average person will take more than 600 million breaths over the course of their life. They stretch and relax the lungs with each inhale and exhale respectively. Those motions influence their development and vital functions. The study published in Nature Communications now shows breathing's role in combating infection. Researchers say the lung chip will provide new information on how lung tissues react to respiratory viruses that have pandemic potential and test potential treatments. Dr. Bai and colleagues line the two parallel microfluidic channels with different types of living human cells. They included alveolar lung cells in the upper channel and the lung blood vessel cells in the lower channel. This recreated the interface between human air sacs and their blood transporting capillaries. Researchers say this is an image of the upper alveolar channel at the top here and the lower blood vessel channel at the bottom of the alveolus chip. Researchers say the cells form intact tissues held together by proteins between the cells, which are stained here in red and green respectively. In this image called immunofluorescence micrographs, Researchers say you can see the 3D channel structure that develops within the alveolar channel that mimics the microstructure of human alveoli. The team infected these breathing alveolus chips with H3N2 influenza by introducing the virus into the air channel. They watched the development of several known hallmarks of infection, including the breakdown of junctions between cells, a 25% increase in cell death, and the initiation of cellular repair programs. Infection also led to much higher levels of multiple inflammatory cytokines in the blood vessel channel. In addition, the blood vessel cells of infected chips expressed higher levels of immune cells. The results confirmed that the alveolus chip could mount an immune response against H3N2 that replicates what happens in the human lungs of a patient infected with the flu virus. So, here's where the whole breathe more thing comes in. To their surprise, chips exposed to breathing motions had a 50% less viral load in their alveolar channels and a significant reduction in inflammatory cytokine levels compared to static chips. Basically, they said the unexpected finding was that mechanical stress alone can generate an immune response in the lungs. A higher strain caused an increase in innate immune response genes and processes, including several inflammatory cytokines. Co-study author Professor Long Long C said, quote, Because the higher strain level resulted in greater cytokine production, it might explain why patients with lung conditions like COPD suffer from chronic inflammation and why patients who are put on high-volume ventilators sometimes experience ventilator-induced lung injury. Scientists say they are using their existing model to study the efficacy of new compounds, drugs, and biologics against flu, COVID, and other diseases. There's lots to take in here, folks, and lots of ramifications to what they've discovered. We have a lot more on this and other studies. Just click on the link in the description below and head over to studyfinds.com.